I just had an interesting encounter with this blender and it's given me the perfect chance to go ahead and practice some plastic welding. I found this in my parents' trash. I was like, hey, this looks interesting to take apart. Can I have it? Sure, you can have it. It smells terrible and it's making a terrible noise. I was like, well, I don't know where the screws are, so I will just grab my Dremel and cut the back off. So once I cut the back off, I realized that, you know, this actually comes off and okay, I didn't really need to have cut that open. Hey, but it doesn't matter because it's a broken blender anyway, right? I was poking around in here just trying to, you know, see if there was anything interesting, anything salvageable. Um, and yeah, it looks pretty cool inside. So I was trying to take off the switches, kind of, you know, broke off a few little parts that hopefully weren't too important. And then I saw something that looked a little strange. So I grabbed my tweezers, kind of reached inside here, and guess what I found? This. Yes, that is a giant roach. And it was just jammed right into the motor and slightly squished in there. And I'm like, well, could that possibly be what was wrong with the motor is that it had a giant insect inside of it. So I kind of put everything back together and plugged it in, tried turning it on and guess what? It works fine and it doesn't smell and it doesn't have any kind of weird noises or anything anymore. So now I get to put this back together. So this should be perfect. I'm gonna probably, you know, clean it up a little bit and then see if I can get a really nice, pretty weld. And then guess what? My mom gets her $500 blender back and doesn't have to replace that. So I guess in this case, curiosity paid. I don't get any salvage parts, but it was worth it to have such an interesting find. And now I'm going to practice my plastic welding. I'm setting my temperature lower than even the coolest preset to see if this can be done without burning the plastic. I also backed the cut line gap with aluminum tape to keep the plastic from melting through and to hold the piece in place. I'm starting with the ABS rods and then switching to armadillo filament for comparison. With the hot end set cooler, immediately the process becomes slower since the plastic doesn't flow well. And yet it's still coming out a little burnt. I'm turning the temp even lower because I want to see if this can be a cleaner process. Here's the issue. The ABS is finally not burning, but now it's annoyingly difficult to melt the plastic, especially trying to mix it into the base blender plastic, so it's not just a weak surface weld. Let's switch to armadillo filament. On this bit, I'm trying to make a weld that looks nice, not discolored. This is the test area that we'll see later was least successful. It did not adhere because it was not melted into the parent plastic aggressively enough. At this corner, the temperature is still low, but I'm putting in the time and effort to melt the armadillo into the blender plastic. By the final edge, my hand is getting very fatigued because I've been applying so much pressure to mush and melt the pieces together with the relatively cool hot end. I have to kick up the heat a tad to get the job done. After turning the heat dial only slightly up, Still below the lowest preset, the filament residue in the hot end continually burns black no matter how many times I clean it out. I thought I was done welding, but as I'm sanding away the excess plastic, I can see how uneven the thickness of the weld is and how poorly adhered it is to the area where the temperature was lowest and the parent plastic was not melded with the filler. This shows that it is truly important to melt and mix the parent and weld plastics together. After this revealing initial sand, I went back over all the seams with armadillo filament and a hotter welder, really working it in this time in the areas that weren't bonded and not worrying about burning. The ABS weld is harder than the blender plastic itself, making it more of a challenge to sand the weld without removing too much of the parent plastic. Sanding is easier on the armadillo parts of the weld since it's a little softer. To get this all really smooth, I would have to do a little more welding and a lot more sanding. This project does not merit such a time investment. It looks pretty okay at this stage. Most importantly, the weld lines are sturdy and waterproof. I still need to cover up the discolored burnt plastic and make it all nice and shiny and easy to clean. So I taped some parts off and gave the base two coats of satin black spray paint. And with that, the repair job is complete. Look at my blender. It's amazing. 
or, you know, functional. You'll see here, obviously, it's not perfect. I definitely didn't get that as smooth as I would have liked, but that's all the time that I have to spend on this, and it was really interesting to work on, you know, an actual product for trying out that, uh, that welder. It's more difficult than I expected to get the, the welding plastic to mix in with the parent plastic. And as you saw, if you don't actually melt the two plastics together, at least somewhat, then as you sand down, you run into these like cracks and gaps and the weld is not actually bonded to the piece. But instead of spending even more time on this, you know, I just painted it black so it's going to blend in with my parents' countertops. And honestly, they're just not going to be all that picky because mere hours ago this was in the trash and now it's been rescued from its insect invader. So it's definitely an option using uh, the 3D printing actual filaments with the plastic welder. The difficulty seems to be in finding the right temperature because every time I turned it up enough to, to melt the plastic easily enough that it wasn't extreme hard labor, um, then the plastic would start melting, uh, burning. And that was true whether it was a printing filament or the actual um, welding rods that come with the kit. It's honestly really labor intensive when I had the temperature at uh, a lower setting to where it wasn't burning the plastic but it was, it's just too much work because it takes so long for the plastic to start melting and you really have to apply pressure uh, to get them to meld together a little bit and to smooth things out. So then once I kicked the temperature up a little bit higher, which was still well below uh, the temperature on the dial for that type of plastic, then um, it was definitely easier to use, but then it starts burning. As you saw, you get that kind of like brown and then you get these little black flakes if you kick it up even higher. So I'm not really sure if um, it's something I'm doing, if it's a flaw with plastic welding in general, or if it's just the particular types of plastic that I'm trying to weld. So I'll keep checking that out and you know see if maybe it will work for um, the actual 3D printed items more easily than with this hard plastic here. Obviously there's all sorts of options for joining plastic pieces. Um, I'm just trying to see, you know, if this is a good option, um, what are its pros and cons, and then just compare that to other methods. And then I know, you know, what's going to work for different types of projects as I come across them. Because I don't think that there's any one way that's necessarily best for every type of printed piece, every, um, you know, type of product that you're printing. Um, for example, um, I know I've got some large pieces coming up for this Witch King costume. And I want them to be, you know, securely joined. I don't, I don't want to have the same trouble I had with Edward Elric, where I had it nice and glued together at the part that goes right under here. Um, but then, um, as I wore the costume, you could start to see the that join line because it was just two flat pieces stuck together. And then I hauled it out the back, you know, filled it in with glue, and the glue just didn't hold it all that well. So I'm thinking. You know, there's other options and I want to try them. So that was your intro into life in a subtropical climate where insects can break your appliances and even the bugs want to get inside out of the heat. So I hope you had fun and had a little bit of a laugh because I sure did. So I will catch you next time.